Hi guys, Adam from Midwest Panel Builders, and today we're going to compare the three screen sizes that Garmin offers in the G3X Touch system for experimental aircraft. So the three display sizes that Garmin has are uh, labeled as the GDU 450, GDU 460, and GDU 470. The 450 is what I have behind me, that's a 7-inch uh, landscape display. The 460 is the 10.6 inch landscape that we'll be comparing this one against, and the GDU 470 is the 7 inch portrait. Let's have a look at the 450 and we'll talk about how the 460 compares to it. So first of all, you can see on the 450 here, the engine information uh, takes a pretty substantial portion of the display, uh, which means that uh, the PFD presentation, some things have to get condensed as compared to the 460. So for example, we have our local time and our outside air temperature actually up on the PFD presentation, not down in this lower information bar like it would be on the GDU 460. Also, you can see that we don't have a ton of room up top for information. Uh, so this is the top data bar Garmin calls it. Uh, so we have just the comm radio and the transponder over here. But over here, uh, we've got just only two spots left for information. If this was a GDU 460, uh, we, you know, if we didn't have another comm radio, I mean, you'd probably have six or seven spots open. Uh, furthermore, when we enter split screen mode, a big difference is now that our map window takes up half of the engine bar, which means that we lose the needles for manifold pressure and RPM, and now it just simply becomes numerical values. So it's not as convenient, obviously, to just see that at the corner of the eye uh, while you're flying along. Uh, now, if we want to bring the map into prominence, we can do that, but now the PFD gets squashed down quite a bit, and uh, we've got you know, most of our information here, we've got our barometric settings, we've got our altimeter and our airspeed indicator, and we've even got a little red triangle for the cast warning, which in this case is fuel pressure. Uh, but unfortunately, um, it's pretty condensed, so it's gonna be somewhat hard to see. Now, if you can swing it, you're actually probably better off if you have to do a seven inch doing the GDU 470, the portrait version. And the reason why is because in the portrait mode, when you have less space like this, Portrait mode allows you to lay things out a lot more conveniently, um, and uh, it just it makes it a lot easier to, to format these things and allow as much readability as possible while still maximizing the screen space. So that's probably what I would go for. The fact of the matter though is if you have the vertical room for a 470, you probably also have the room for a 1060. Okay, so what I meant to say was 460. In my head, I was thinking 460 and 10.6, and it came out as 1060. Now, to be clear, 1060 is a TXI product, uh, but we were talking about the 460 here. Unless you're horizontally challenged uh, on panel space. So another thing of note over here on the 450 is the lack of inset windows on the PFD presentation. The GDU 460 has two of them, and you can change them to be whatever you want them to be. On the GDU 450, unfortunately, we don't have that. Now, if we are in split screen mode with the map, that map is about the size of an inset window on a GDU 460. Other than those uh, few differences that we talked about though, the 450 and 460, and for that matter, the 470, are all functionally identical. They all perform the same tasks, it's just how you see that uh, is a little bit different. Uh, but they have the same great autopilot built in, all the same comm radio capabilities and airport information, um, everything's there. So if you have not a ton of room in your panel, like this bush cap, um, this is probably gonna be the screen for you. Um, we could, in some cases, move the screen over a little bit and make it the full 10 inch display. It probably doesn't make sense in this panel though because that would put it basically something like this. And when your pilot position is centered over here, now you're looking over for information and not looking in front and down to you for information. So it's a little less convenient to use it that way. One quick tip on recovering a little bit of space on your screen for some information uh, on this GDU 450 here, we've got the comm radio, we've got the transponder, and then we've got the two data blocks like I mentioned earlier. Now, in this particular case, what I'm about to show you probably doesn't make a ton of sense just because the comm radio is all the way over on the right side of the panel. Um, but what you can do if it's more centered, you can actually go to your screen into config mode and you can hide the on-screen controls of that comm radio. 
So even though the screen will still be connected and we'll still know it's there, and thus you can still send frequencies to the radio from the um, waypoint page, it just won't be taking up room on the data block up top, which means that you can probably recover two or three extra uh, pieces of information up here uh, that you otherwise wouldn't have. And just like all the other G3X displays, this information can be whatever you want it to be. So my personal favorites are probably distance to destination and estimated time on route to destination, uh, but they've got probably a hundred different options to pick from uh, all different parameters. And then if you have third party devices like a CO Guardian, CO Detector, you can even put those up there too. All right guys, I hope you found this information helpful. This was a customer requested video, and so if you have a request for another piece of information you'd like to know about regarding Garmin Avionics, feel free to let us know and we'll be happy to help cover it for you. If you have any other questions regarding the GDUs um, in the different uh, screen sizes, you can also leave a comment for that or get a hold of us through our normal channels otherwise. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.